Padma Bhushan awardee Dr. Keval Kishan Talwar is the chairman of PSRI Heart Institute New Delhi. The renowned cardiologist is a former chairman of the Medical Council of India, former head of Department of Cardiology at AIMS New Delhi and director of PGI MER Chandigarh. Dr. Talwar is credited to have performed the first implantation of implantable cardioverter defibrillator therapy in South Asia and also for the introduction of cardiac resynchronization therapy in India. His work on cardiac arrhythmia helped develop it as a speciality in India and also develop heart failure and heart transplant programs at AIMS. Dr. Talwar is the recipient of several honors, including Dr. B. C. Roy Award, the highest Indian award in the medical category, and the third highest civilian honor of the Padma Bhushan in 2006 for his remarkable contributions to medicine. In this episode of Touching Lives, watch Dr. K. K. Talwar share his experience of revolutionary changes in the field of cardiac sciences, advancements in heart transplantations and his message for upcoming cardiologists. Hello and welcome to ET Health World's video series Touching Lives. Today we have been joined by renowned cardiologist Dr. K.K. Talwar, Chairman of Cardiac Sciences at PSRI Hospital. A very warm welcome sir. So with over four decades of experience as a practicing cardiologist, how do you view the evolution of cardiac medical devices, medicines and treatment? You see, it has been very, very interesting, very learning journey, I must tell you. Mm. When I passed my cardiology training, mm. like you have MD, then you have DM cardiology, mm. that was late 70s. Mm. I think that medicine that or cardiology that we are practicing today it was not there even that time. Hmm. So I think these four decades, or plus four decades, have been more of learning. Hmm. So much new things have come up. Hmm. I'll give you a few examples. One, I think I'll just to make it a little more uh, sound kind. During that time, we were using a drug, hmm. which we thought is very useful for this disease. Right. And uh, today we know it was harmful. Hmm. Now we don't touch it. Mm. And there was another drug which we thought it's harmful. Mm. If I would have in my examination mentioned that I will use this drug for this purpose for a heart failure kind of thing, I would have been failed. Mm. That this boy doesn't know even this, that this can't be used. Mm. And today we know this is the best drug for that. Mm. So but in the journey of cardiology evolution has been so tremendous, it's mm. unbelievable. Apart from medical, now we technology-wise. Mm. You know, the intervention cardiology came. It started in early 80s kind of a thing. Mm. That you can now have a catheter, you can get into the coronary arteries, you have blockages, you can open it, stent it. Then we have another problem in cardiology we call arrhythmias. Right. Some people get suddenly fast stage. Mm. And sometimes they can be also fatal. I mean, mm. they can be very serious. Mm. Before that, we only were using some medication. And we were not even sure whether these drugs, how much they help. Mm. I mean, today we know that some of the drugs were harmful. Mm. But we had no choice that time. Today we have technologies. We can study those kind of arrhythmias, mm. put catheter into the heart. We can see from where they are originating hmm. and then you can just uh, as a, give some kind of energy source, ablate that focus and the person is cured. Hmm. It was something which, I mean, this was like early 90s when we started this, uh, uh, these procedure in AIMS. So, I mean, it's unimaginable to think about that there is a science available. Hmm. Then devices, pacemaker, hmm. people need it, it's life saving. I mean, if you, so the pacemaker came. Now we have specialized pacemaker which can, can give you like a heart is weak. That you by putting pacemaker into these are more specialized, uh, it's not for the that the heart function can improve. Mm. Then you have defibrillator implanted into the body. The defibrillator is weighs about initially was around 10, 12, uh, 15 kg. And the person who miniaturizes 
made it that you could put it in the body. So, a lot of things have happened in cardiology, particularly imaging. You have a CT coronary injury, you have MRI which has come, mm. echocardiography. I think when I did my cardiology training, echo was not available. Mm. And today, I think we can't do cardiology without echo. Mm. So, I think tremendous progress has happened in technology, procedures, of course, through medication, also thrombolytic therapy. Mm. When it came that acute heart attack, you give a ther therapy, you can dissolve the clot. Mm. So, I think now we probably can take the patient to the lab and can do angioplasty. So, I must say that there has been a significant advance in the last four or five decades, which has changed the practice of cardiology tremendously. And of course, I think we have been able to help the patients sort of tremendously because of these. Do you see some challenges that still exist even after so much advancements in technology that we see today? You see, the challenges are still huge. For example, it's heart failure, we say, mm. or you, the epidemic where we were talking about, coronary heart disease. Mm. We know that um, you can go for bypass surgery, we can do angioplasty, but still we are not sure how to prevent it. I mean, we suppose you say, okay, okay, this person has let me give him this medication, it will dissolve the clots which has happened. We are not still far away from that. We are not, we, we are able to treat in a way you can get symptomatically. Mm. But are we able to address to the disease why it is occurring? Why we can't stop its occurrence? Mm. So I think these are still challenges going on. Heart failure patients, we have so many drugs still. 50% mm. of the patients we lose in the first few years or so. Mm. In, in spite of what we have. Mm. So I think the challenges are to understand the to pathogenesis of these diseases mm. and uh, like also regenerative medicine is one area which I think is growing genetic, molecular or cell therapies that you like um, stem cell probably came in early 2000 I think when we named started doing this particular stem cell therapy in cardiac patients but still we are not sure whether it helped or not Mm. Still, I think there a lot of uh, work is needed. So, I think there are challenges to uh, the nature is you find an answer, but we, we still lot to be uh, worked on, how far we succeed. But I think uh, these uh, advances which has occurred has made us realize mm. we also have to put our due emphasis on prevention. Mm. How we can prevent all this? So that's, I think, is a challenge. I mean, today we have a vaccine for COVID. We have a vaccine for uh, polio. Mm. Do we have a vaccine for atherosclerosis? That you give a vaccine that he will not that get a coronary heart disease. I mean, of course, people are working on that kind of a concept. So I think a lot of things have to be still... Uh, we have to find new answers, new uh, therapies. Today, we see a high adoption of smart wearables, which helps you monitor the heart rate. Do you expect this to bring in better awareness and timely detection of cardiac events? I'll say that there is both a merit and demerit of this. Hmm. The merit has been that um, some people, like some are prone to paroxysmal heart problem. We call arrhythmias, palpitations, or sometimes maybe some people get like uh, fainting issues. If you have these devices with you, then ideally, let's suppose somebody faints or complains of palpitation that we should have to see him at that time, we do an EC that time to mm. diagnose. Yeah. But this is not possible. I mean, uh, somebody is sitting somewhere, by the time he goes to the hospital, takes time and the symptom may disappear. So I think when these kind of technologies are available, at that particular time, patients know that I had this problem, he can see how my the heart rate is going. We have patients who we call, some people get atrial fibrillation episodes. They pick it up and then even they send you there that I had this ECG like this time. So that's say advantage, you can pick up something which is happening at their particular and then accordingly take uh, steps to advise him what is to be done. Mm. But the demerit which I mentioned mm. is what people are getting unnecessarily occupied. Mm. Every young person, I think probably it's more of a Status also that you are having Apple Watch, some smart watch and other one is not having. 
Well, what happens that some people, I mean, suddenly you are doing something, rate goes up, they get worried. Mm. Oh, my heart rate has gone to hundreds. I mean, that unnecessarily, sometimes you get occupied, which has no meaning at all. Mm. So mm. that may interfere with your routine, with your professional work, with your mind also. Mm. So, so they're buried, they come to you and then you have to little sort of assure them. Mm. And sometimes one really advise, ki, please take away the watch. You don't, you don't have anything. Mm. So I think both merit and demerit. Mm. So I think we have to understand it. So, so what according to you are the major breakthroughs that have improved heart transplantation outcomes today? You see, the uh, outcome in heart transplantation main major factor has been the mm. kind of uh, drugs or immunosuppressive medications. Mm. Like before 1980, I think uh, so the outcome was very sort of limited. Mm. But since we got some better drugs, cyclists. Mm came. Now we have newer, more drugs. So mm. number one, that uh, because the major problem with this heart transplant is re rejection. In the body. That's right. So these are the drugs which prevent that kind of a phenomena. And so we have now better drugs. Mm. We also, I'll say that uh, small tools to pick up rejection at early time. Mm. Because if you can pick up quickly, you can take precaution, therapies to take care of the rejection. So these are, I think, few things which has helped us to improve the outcome in patients with heart transplant. Mm. And I think people are now living, um, I know the Indian, the longest survival, I, because I was involved in this program mm. when I was in Ames, 2000 she was uh, and had a heart had transplant a heart surgery, and today is 23 years. Oh my She's still God. active. Surgical techniques have been improved. Mm. So, but the major is immunosuppressive therapy. Mm. Drugs that we have to take care of rejection has really helped us to improve. So, though, of course, there are few challenges continuing. Like patients on immunosuppressive therapy, they have some other problem. We call vasculopathy. Mm -hmm. Their coronary arteries start getting uh, blocked and kind of a thing. So we still don't have the answer to that. Uh, but I'll say uh, uh, these few things have certainly the immunosuppressive therapy, rejection, uh, early diagnosis and therapeutic intervention therapy. So are there any pros and cons that you see as a practicing cardiologist in India? You see, pros and cons, I, know, I can only say that the practice of medicine in general, mm -hmm. there has been some changes which are not very good also. Mm -hmm. We have so much advances, we can do so many things. But what you see, patient-doctor confidence mm -hmm. has suffered, is gradually suffering. Mm -hmm. Patient earlier used to say, Dr. Joe, now the consent for me is becoming very important. You must get a consent done. Mm -hmm. I tell you, in my career, I mean, patient will say, Dr. Sir, Joe, you look He's right. Mm -hmm. How does he know? It's mm -hmm. up to you to feel that this is going to be helpful or not. What are the kind of concern that you have? So you have to little be... But otherwise, uh, this is one, I think, issue in medicine, I must say, which somehow the other we need to address too, as mm -hmm. professionals. Some things we are borrowing from the best, which is, uh, I mean, we are borrowing technology is good. But we are also borrowing their bad practices. Mm. I mean, I went to USA for my fellowship training. I was surprised the, mm. the what the lawyers are uh, moving about. Uh, they, uh, they will find a fault. Okay, this is, this is, what, I was saying, what is this? I mean, the patient doctor should have a confidence into each other. Mm. These are in the field where I think, uh, for example, I think I always felt and I always tell my juniors, my colleagues, that any patient then it comes. I mean, you feel, if I am the patient, what I expect from the doctor? Mm. My approach to the patient should be, what if I am a patient, what I expect from uh, the doctor for me to do? Mm. So I think we need to, this is one area I think in, in our culture, patient had such a confidence in doctor, doctor was like his family members. I wish that we are able to work on to get confidence of this society. Okay. Uh, what is your message for students looking to enter the field of cardiology? I think if you are entering cardiology, number one, 
you must make sure that you are you have to work hard there is no shortcut mm. number 2 be devoted to your subject and be devoted to your patients mm. because this is a field where i think you can be called any time so that if uh, acute emergency in cardiac emergency you may so i think you have to be devoted hard working sincere mm. and be honest to your patients mm. always look at their interest if you have these kind of qualities you wish to do and another thing i'll say don't be too much attracted to materials mm. and i mean i'm sure god will give you enough that you uh, can sustain and you can have your comfortable life but don't be too much mm. sort of greed on that issue mm. Mm. and that's for every doctor mm. but in cardiology this is because i think they so i think if you have these kind of uh, you have to be prepared for these kind of thing only then you enter cardiology mm. today uh, you'll be surprised cardiology was one of the most uh, attractive subject in specializations mm. when i am in mean, there we is huge competition to mm. get into cardiology training programs you have two seats and maybe 10 twelve time 10 20 times candidates mm. that you are competing for for the last few years the we call dm cardiology which is a training kind mm. of program 150 seats were vacant in the country now the youngsters are not willing to take up this subject one is that you you are ready to put in your heart but but you must also have the return because uh, it's a periphery if you go you don't have the facilities what you have learned to do it mm. the system has to provide you that everybody may not be that rich that you can invest and put your own facilities so i think these are the some of the now people are not very the students are not very much attracted to as i mentioned but do you think that's a, a financial issue is a bigger problem to actually go into the field of medicine or any sub specialty you see financial to some extent were there some years back okay before the need you can say to some extent mm. people had to pay huge amount of money mm. to get admissions mm mm-hmm. for specialties for cardiology dm seats and the colleges will ask so much money but i think after that mm. because it became a centralized examination mm. they have a limitation right because um, i must mention to you that uh, i was chairing the mca when we initiated this need mm. we notified date in 2012 mm. when i was chairing the medical council and there were huge difficulty to do it because the private lobby was so strong Mm. because that was i mean they were charging huge money for admissions mm. so i think as for the money part is not uh, at these days the fee structure or that's not a issue issue is what are the kind of opportunities after doing when you have to put in so much hard work you must mm. get some return mm. and then you must get places where you can use your training program right the medical colleges are there they have cardiology department but they don't have the infrastructure Mm. now without infrastructure what a person who has been trained will do mm. so we need to look into those areas to make okay. it more attractive okay thank you so much sir